101, let's begin. So uh, we are uh, learning the uh, first page of this uh, uh, chapter of Brachas, chapter six. And it is, a, it is a little confusing because the Gemara is utilizing the method that it likes to, uh, which is to figure out, to, to go back and forth and try to figure out if we can find a, a source to recite a bracha. And when I say it's the, the method that it likes to is because the Babylonian Talmud loves to prove things um, to the extent that you can't, you know, you, it, it proves it uh, that there's no other way out. You have to explain it this way. And so it, it tries to prove it. And what ends up happening is it always, there's always a question well, it's not really a good proof because you may be able to explain it differently. And maybe that's not a good proof because maybe that means such and such, or maybe it's not a good proof because maybe that's a unique law over there and it doesn't apply here. So the Gemara goes back and forth using, utilizing these methods. And ultimately the Gemara is gonna conclude that the source to recite a bracha on food is really logic. It's, it's not sourced in a pasuk. It's really something that's logical, that a person would be prohibited to eat uh, and benefit from this world without a blessing. But until we get to that point, the Gemara does have to go through the method that it uses, and that is tries to say, maybe we could learn it from this law in the Torah. And so what specific law is our Gemara mainly dealing with? Mainly it's dealing with the law of the fourth year produce. And we've gone over it already, uh, the, pre, the Gemara that we learned uh, two days ago. So I don't want to go over it again uh, because we already did a uh, review. But I just want to emphasize that what the Gemara is trying to figure out is, do we have a proof from the laws of the fourth year produce? And over there, it does seem to hint that there is some idea of blessing because it uses the word hilulim, koidesh hilulim lahashem, and which means that this produce of the fourth year is praises for Hashem. It's, it's, a, it, it's, it's, it's taken to Jerusalem, it's holy, koidesh, and it's hilulim lahashem, it's supposed to be... Uh, um, eaten with praises to Hashem, which means, at least the Gemara is understanding it, to mean that you would need to recite a blessing before eating it and after eating it. And if you have to recite a blessing for the, um, if you would have to recite a blessing for the uh, fourth year produce before you eat and after eat it, it would be logical to say that anytime any produce, you would have to recite a bracha. At least that's the Gemara's assumption. And um, the Gemara dealt with an issue of, do, do, we, do we use this word, hilulim, to teach you bracha? We use it for other teachings. And one of those teachings is that the law of the fourth year produce only applies to grapes. And that's one view. One view holds that, you know, you might have orchards and um, all different uh, types of uh, produce that you grow. But the law of the fourth year, according to one opinion, is only applicable to grapes and anything else. You don't have to worry about the fourth year. You can eat and enjoy the fruit of the fourth year. And that opinion uses the term for the fourth year rules as kerem revoy. It's important to know the term, kerem revoy. It's the fourth year of the vineyard. That's how he holds, that that's the term of the holy, the holy produce of the fourth year is called kerem revoy. It's called the vineyard's fourth year because it only applies to a vineyard. Now, the other opinion says, no, it's called neta revoy, fourth year plantings. And according to that view, it applies to all trees. 
all trees, uh, the law of the fourth year applies. And he calls it neta ruboy, fourth, fourth, fourth year plantings. So we've got these two, these two opinions, and the Gemara dealt with: Do we have the ability to learn this from the word hilulim, or is that word used for other teachings? And one of those teachings is that it only applies to a item that is used to praise God on the altar. And that teaching would mean that it only would only apply to the, um, the, the grapes. So what comes out from this, uh, where we're holding now is let's, let's take both of these views. So we've got the view that it only applies to grapes. According to that view, the word hilulim is totally being used. We have no extra hilulim to teach us bracha. Nothing. There's nothing extra about it. If you learn that it applies to all produce, the fourth year rule applies to all produce, that you have to bring it to Jerusalem and rejoice there with God, with the new produce, the fourth year produce. So according to that view, then there is one extra hilulim. The word hilulim, there's one teaching from hilulim that could be used to teach you bracha. And the question is, which bracha will you use it to teach you? Where would you, in other words, it's going to teach you one law of bracha. You have to recite a bracha. So let me ask you, which, which bracha do you think it would teach us? Should it teach us the bracha before eating or after eating? Before eating, I ate. Why? Well. Uh, Maybe it should teach us to recite a bracha after eating. What do you think, Ben? I think that if they say hilulim twice, it means before and after. Right. But the thing is, one of the hilulim, it is plural, true, but one of them is used to teach you about deconsecrating it. So we only have one extra word hilulim of praise. And because we only have one extra, we can only learn, let's say, one, one bracha from it. So which one would you use it for? Should we, what would you say is more important, is more logical, more, or we have a source in the Torah maybe for, do we have any source in the Torah for one of the brachas that we should say before or after? Which one would it be? If, if, if you were given a, a law that you do have to recite a bracha, but I'm not telling you which one, and you have to figure it out, which one would you choose? Yes, sir. Yes, Ben. I still think it would be, well, I think it would be then before, because after we bless on, on all the food that we ate, not just on, on the wine. So the, the after bracha that the Torah talks about, at least on, a, on, a, on a, 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 a simple level, would apply to bread. Our Mishnah is, a ta- is talking about all foods, fruits, vegetables, and stuff. So the question would be, the Torah talks about an obligation to recite an after bracha on bread, on a meal. So now we're talking, we, we are now trying to adapt uh, or, you know, or deal with reciting a bracha on not a meal, on just fruits and vegetables. So where would we assume that if there's an obligation to recite a bracha, where would we place that bracha? Would it be after food or, or before it? So uh, the truth, the, 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 what, what I hear from Moshe and from Ben is that it would make sense to recite it before, before eating. Both of you seem to be leaning towards that. And logically, you're both correct. Logically, it would make sense to recite a bracha before eating more than after eating. Because before eating is a real time to praise Hashem because now is when you need Hashem's blessing and you feel the obligation to thank Hashem for giving you this food. After you eat, you, in a certain sense, you sort of don't need it anymore. You already, you already ate. 
so uh, there's there's some element of praise that you have before eating than after eating and um and in in in, in logic that's what the Gemara does. The Gemara does seem to understand things that way, logically. However, there's also the biblical precedent. And what is the biblical precedent? The biblical precedent is that there is an obligation to recite a bracha after eating and not before eating. So the biblical precedent would tell you, say the bracha, be- say the bracha after and not before. Logic would tell you, say the bracha before and not after. Okay, so the Gemara is going to say that if we have one teaching to recite a bracha, we should follow the biblical precedent, and that is to recite a bracha after eating rather than before eating. Again, the biblical case is talking about after a meal, after bread, (laughs) bread meal, a meal with bread. And we are adapting that idea to apply to eating any type of snack or food that doesn't have bread, that there's no bread or a meal, even, but there's no bread. So we would adapt that idea and say, well, we have one teaching to teach us uh, a bracha. Let's use it to teach us a bracha after eating. So that's what the Gemara is going to say. And I'm going to start, I'm going to read it inside. <clears throat> So I'm going to start at about 20 lines down the page. Hanicha. Hanicha lamandatani neta revod. This is good. The one that 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 learns neta revod that all produce. Today's learning is in the merit of a speedy recovery for Svi ben Miriam Edel. Okay, so the, the Gemara says, It's good if we, the, the opinion that says that the fourth year produce applies to all produce, then everything seems to go good because we will have one extra teaching to learn out of Hilolim. But if you learn Kerem Revoi, which means if you learn that it only applies to the uh, vineyard, only grapes have the law of the fourth year, my ikola meimar, how can you, what can you say? We have no extra word to learn the obligation to recite a bracha because both of those hilu limbs, both of those praises that we saw, there was an extra word praises, plural, which meant two praises, both of them are being used to teach us something. So according to that view that it only applies to uh, grapes, that, according to that view, there's no extra word. So my equal a memar, what can you say? How would you know that you have to recite a bracha? The itmar, because we learned, um, it was taught by the early Amoy Ra'im, the author, the early authors of the Gemara. Reb Chia, Reb Shimon, Rebbe, that there's an argument between Reb Chia and Reb Shimon, the son of Rebbe, Chad Tani Kerem Revoi. One of them learns that it only applies to Kerem, to a vineyard. V'chad Tani Neta Revoi, and one learns that it applies to all plantings. So there are two views. And according to the opinion of that it applies to only a vineyard, that is going to be a problem. We have no source to teach us the obligation of reciting a bracha. Now, if you learn that it only applies to the fourth year uh, uh, produce of a, of a vine, of, a, of a grapes, if you follow that, there is one way where you would have an extra verse of Hilolim. How? If you learn that it applies only to grapes from an alternative source, then you have the word Hilolim extra. So again, we have the word Hilolim, 
And the simple understanding is that we learn two things out of that word hilulim already. So we don't have any way to learn the obligation of a bracha from that word because it's already being used. But if you have an alternative way of learning what we want to learn out of hilulim from an alternative source, we're going to learn it. Then we will have one of the hilulim, one of the praises we will be able to use to show that there's an obligation to recite a bracha. And that, that, what is the alternative source? Now the Gemara tells us this alternative source that it would only apply to a vineyard. What is the alternative source? So here it tells us, This is good if we learn that there is a Gzeira Shava. Gzeira Shava means there's a word that it says in two places, and it'll teach us that the same law that applies there applies here, or the same meaning that applies there applies here because there's the same word and there's a way, a method, a code. One of the ways of decoding the Torah is this method called Gzeira Shava, where there's two words that are identical and one of them teaches for the other one. And we are able to, uh, um, to learn one from the other. So it's good if we learn Gzeira Shava, this, ter- this concept of using one uh, word to teach us another place, another, the same meaning. The Tanya, because we learned in a Brisa, Rebbe Oimer, Rebbe says, Khan lachem So it says over here by the fourth year produce to add for you your that if you follow these laws, you will benefit greatly from the produce. It'll be moisif, it'll add for you produce. If you follow the laws that you don't need any from the third year and the from the first three years, and then the fourth year you bring it to Jerusalem, it'll add for you tvuasoy. Now tvuasoy literally would mean grain. But it could also mean produce. It could mean a general concept of produce, or it could mean grain. Now, uh, we're going to learn from this Gzeira Shava, from the fact that there's a word, the same here and the same somewhere else. We're going to learn to teach us that, 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 that just like over there, it means specifically produce and not all produce, but the produce of a vineyard. So here also we're going to learn that it means the produce of a vineyard. So it says here, Tivuasai, in Nemar Benemar Lahalon, it says over there regarding mixing in your field, there's a prohibition to mix different species. And one of them would be grapes, and the other is grain. You're not allowed to grow grain and gra- grapes together. So, you know, if someone wanted to um, uh, crossbreed uh, grain and grapes, that is a biblical prohibition. It is a biblical prohibition, kilayim. It's almost like crossbreeding animals, which is also prohibited. And so crossbreeding um, these, the, the grain and grapes is prohibited, and it uses the term utvuas hakerem. It uses the term, the produce of the vineyard. So here also, mala halon kerem, just like over there, it means the produce specifically of a vineyard. Here also, Afkan Kerem, here also it specifically means the produce of a vineyard. Yes, Yehuda. Yeah, isn't the prohibition against uh, mixing any um, any two species? Yeah. So, so, but, but the, the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the biblical, uh, the biblical prohibition um, of, uh, of kilayim, specifically grain and, 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 um, and uh, uh, grain and grapes. But there are rabbinic obliga- uh, prohibitions on top of that, which would basically limit person from mixing, uh, you know, from mixing species together. So the the only one that's biblical is is the grain and the uh, the grapes. As far as I know, I must tell you that the laws of Kaliyim are very complex. So it has a whole tractate of its own. Uh, so it, you know, it's it's and it's not commonly studied, uh, at least in yeshivas. But uh, as far as I know, that's the, that, that that's that's the that's the rule. Wow! Um, Thank you. Yeah, David. Yeah, I have a question about uh, learning to say uh, 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 bracha rishona, first blessing from the uh, from the after blessing. 
because the after blessing is conditional on you being satisfied. And the first blessing is not. You're just eating it and you're just saying a blessing before you eat it, no matter how much you eat, whether you eat an ounce or two ounces mm -hmm. or whether you eat the, the required measurement. So how can you learn one, how can you learn the, the beginning bracha from the after bracha when the after bracha is conditional on an amount when it's satisfaction? It's a very good question. We didn't actually uh, come to that in the Gemara yet. So let's hold that, but it's a very good, very good question. Yes, uh, Julian. You're, you're muted. Sorry, I seem to remember in the Siddur, isn't there, aren't there 13 laws of interpretation? Or does yes. that have no relevance to what we're discussing? That has a lot of relevance. You are okay. right on. You're okay. right on. Um, in fact, the first one, the first two are a kal which is an, a light law with a uh, very com uh, complicated law uh, or something light and something heavy, something. And that's the first law or a priori argument. And that, the next one is Gzeira Shava, is what we just learned. And we're going to learn both of these today. But the one, the one that we just mentioned is, is exactly as you're saying. That's correct. Thank you. Okay. So... Um, the uh, so the Gemara continues and says that we have an alternative way of learning, according to the view that it only applies to grapes. The fourth year produce law only applies to grapes. We have an alternative way of learning it, and that would mean that the word hilolim will allow us a option to learn from it, an obligation to recite a bracha, at least one of the word hilolims. In other words, hilolim is plural, and one of them is being used for, teach us about deconsecration. But the other law, the other hilolim would teach us, it would, uh, it would, it would make it possible to uh, learn a bracha. So iyater chad hilol bracha. Now we have extra one word hilol praise for a bracha, to teach us the obligation to recite a bracha. Now, the Eloyalaf Zereshava. Now, if we don't learn Zereshava, Bracha Menole. How do we know Bracha? We know that there is a view that learns it from Hilolim. And they learn that Hilolim teaches you that it only applies to grapes. If you learn it from Hilolim, then you are stuck. There is no Hilul, no praise, no word Hilul to teach you the obligation of reciting a Bracha. So if you follow that way of of learning, then there, how do you know the obligation to recite a bracha? And now the Gemara continues and asks more questions. Even if you do learn that there's the, from the alternative way of, um, from the alternative way of proof of, of learning that it only applies to a, to a vineyard, uh, and, 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 which is the Gezer Shava option. So then you have one extra Hilo. Ashkechon Leacharov, all we're going to know from that is about the after blessing. Lefanov Minayan, how are we going to know to recite a bracha before eating? So what we've just proved is that there's a bracha after eating, but we don't know about the bracha that's before eating. And how, do, how are we going to know that bracha, the bracha before eating? All we would have is one extra word, hilul, which means praise. And we would learn from the fourth year produce that you do have to praise Hashem. And we would assume that that probably applies after you ate this fourth year produce. Uh, that You would say a bracha because similar to the after bracha on bread would be the after bracha on these fourth year produce. And we would say that after the bracha afterwards is learned from this fourth year produce, Hilulim. But how are you going to know that you have to recite a bracha before eating? So, Lafan of Minayan. So the Gemara says, Haloi Kasha. This is not a Kasha. This is not a Kasha. Why not? Because the Asya Bekal Vachaymer. We would learn it from a Kal Vachaymer. If a person is satisfied and he recites a bracha, 
In other words, he's already satisfied and he's obligated to say thank you to Hashem, to Shehu Raiv, when he's hungry and the food is in front of him and Hashem has provided him food. So, like Kolshkin, shouldn't he be obligated to recite a blessing thanking Hashem, praising Hashem for food? If he's already satisfied and he has to recite a bracha, in a certain sense, that would be less logical than reciting a bracha before eating. Because before eating, Hash Hashem provided you something to eat. So now you for sure should recite a bracha. After eating, you're already satisfied. So after eating, maybe you would think that you don't need so many so much praises. Before eating, you know, you have to praise Hashem much more. So if you have to recite a bracha after eating, how much more so before eating? Now, the, the, the Gemara uses this term, kal It sounds like it's very obvious. And, um, it, you know, it, it's an interesting kal I, I I think it deserves to be explained more. And... Um, do, I was. I'm wondering if anyone here would like to uh, has any thought of how to explain this in better better words. The kal that if you recite a bracha afterwards, for sure you should recite a bracha before. Is there anyone that maybe wants to uh, has any thought on that? Rabbi, yes, I I'm thinking that before you eat, if if you bless after you eat, you already ate, you you already stole the food if you didn't say the bracha before you ate. So, in order for you to make sure that you thank God for what you are receiving. And then when you use it, that you get a kind of getting a permission to eat. And then after the eating, you, you bless again because you enjoyed it. But before you eat, you bless for getting the food. So is that more logical? Well, it's kalvachoma, meaning it's, it's important to, to say after the eating, but because you're saying after the eating, it's likely that you should say before also. So is it more that's, likely that's, that you should recite the, the problem before? But I'm saying there is two meanings here. One is for getting the food, right. and one is for eating the food. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So you're saying getting the food deserves more of a praise than eating the food. Eating the food is only if you enjoyed it. <laughs> but, uh, well, if you ate bread, but, which is really the, the, um, the reason you're blessing afterwards. But before you, you bless for all the food that you receive, any other food that you receive. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, all right. Yes, uh, Robert. Well, my thinking is um, everything happens under God's um, presence. And if and so what we thank Hashem is for having it grow and for allowing us to eat it, the sustenance. And afterwards, it's a thank you for it being a part of our body, our essence, and our nourishment. And so which one is more deserving of praise? I think the first one is, again, before. because uh -huh. before, because it was Hash, Hashem's, you know, a, Hashem doing it, allowing us in the presence of Hashem to, to live, to have nourishment. And the second one is our own satisfaction in being able to eat it. But the primary one for me is Hashem allowed it to, to be the fruit of the earth. Uh 
and the wine of the vine, and the bread of the earth. So you're you're dividing it between my own personal satisfaction versus like the creation of it. I think and the creation of it is the more important. Satisfaction is one thing, because but we survive by it. And we only survive by it because God allowed it to happen. So the creation of it is a much more uh, magnified, right? Profound, profound. Profound. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds. That sounds good. Um, The Gemara. I I will just (laughs) add that from the term that the Gemara uses, it seems to emphasize that the fact that a person is hungry and he's going to be able to satisfy his hunger is more praiseworthy than the fact that it was satisfied in the past, that you satisfied your hunger already. In other words, the fact that you're going to be able to satisfy your hunger because the food is there ready for you to eat, that deserves, it seems from the, the term that the Gemara uses, now I'm not, dis, I'm not uh, minimizing the, 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 uh, you know, the, the, the explanations that you've mentioned. I think that's great. I, I'm just sharing with you yeah. from the term the Gemara, and I'm sharing with all of you from the term the Gemara uses, it seems the way the Gemara is understanding it is that, um, that, when you're when you're when you're hungry and you're going to be able to satisfy your 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 hunger, um, that that deserves more praise than than after the fact that you already that you ate and it did satisfy you. Somehow, the, the, the I guess the pain of your hunger and that it will be satisfied. It deserves more praise than after the fact that you're already you're already satisfied. Like you don't, in a certain sense, you don't feel the pain at this moment of the hunger, the hunger pain, <clears throat> something along those lines. That's what it, it seems like. Now, um, Rabbi, yes. When we eat the uh, lechem, you know, we say uh, hamotzi initially. And now, after we eat, we say uh, brakat hamazon. But you, wouldn't that be reversed then if that were the case? I mean, we'd say Brikat the Bazon first, and then we'd say uh, Hamotzi, but there is, there's more, you know, there's more wording involved in the, uh, you know, in the Brikat the Mazon, and that would show more emphasis on being more, more, showing more uh, uh, grateful to Hashem, you know. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Should be- yeah, you're asking good questions. You're saying that if the Brikat the Mazon is so long, it would seem that uh, that that's more valuable and more important. That's a yes. that's a challenging question. Yes. I think my, uh, Robert wants to answer yeah. that. Yeah. Well, my perspective is if you didn't have if you weren't satiated, if you didn't have the the food in your stomach, you wouldn't have the ability to praise God for allowing the meal to be had. So the most important thing is that it was provided under God's reign, and therefore we should thank God. And we have the luxury. We don't have the rumblings in our stomach any longer. And praising God for what he gave us is a satisfying experience. So, so what you're saying is if you weren't in pain before, maybe the, 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 the blessing before eating would be longer than the blessing afterwards. But because you're in pain, is that, is that, is that sort no, of what you're No, no, what I'm saying is if we didn't have the food, we wouldn't have the luxury of doing the Bechon Hamatzon. Or, like you said, we're hungry, so hungry, we would be uncomfortable and not be able to, to do the Bechat because it is a long passage. So again, the importance is Hashem provided for us sustenance and we're satisfying. And now we're back into, let's say, equilibrium, that we have the ability, we're, you know, we're being, we were fed, we're being nourished. That provides us the vitamins, the minerals, the substance for us to then, you know, enjoy thanking God for giving us the food after God had provided it for us. Right. But I'm just wondering, what would be the specific answer to answer Moshe's question of why is the bracha before eating so short 
in the bracha after eating so long, if if we're saying the bracha before eating is more is maybe more logical. I, I, I don't think the length of the of the beginning bracha is questionable because we're thanking uh -huh. we're thanking Hashem. But uh -huh. by the fact that we're able to eat and then be calmed by it, then we can praise again the thanks for allowing us to be nourished to live for another meal, to live for another day. Right. Okay. And so it could be it should be longer because you know, we've already eaten. So right. anticipation is torturous. And you don't need to be tortured to be able to eat. I mean, it's, you know, I, you know what I mean. But the point right. is, thank you, God. Now I can eat. And then thank you, God. This is, you know, this is what I'm thanking you for that gives me the sustenance to continue my life. Right, right. Okay, okay. Um, I, Yehuda, I think, had his hand up first. Yes, Yehuda. Yeah, one of the uh, praises that God gives us is, uh, is what? That uh, that the commandment is to uh, for the after bracha is when we're satisfied, and one of the um, th that even if we're not satisfied, we we say this. Looks like Okay. There's another element. Of, uh, hello. Yeah, Shlomo Yesif, just wait. Yeah, yeah, we hear you, Shlomo Yesif. Just wait one second. I want to. I want to hear Yehuda fully. So you you're talking about the bracha before that, even if you're not satisfied, the bracha after. The bracha after. Okay, and that so, some place in the Torah, I, I don't know where it it says that one of the. Uh, one of the uh, th things that uh, uh, Hashem compliments us on is that the only requirement mm. for the extra bracha is right. we're, we're satisfied, but we, we say the... Um, but we go beyond beyond the letter of the law, and we even recite the after blessing, even if we're not satisfied, if we just eat a kazayas or a kabetza, we, uh, right. we say the after blessing. So therefore, Hashem shows us... Uh, Yair uh, Hashem Panavelacha Hashem shows us um, uh, favoritism, even though uh, you know how could he not show us favoritism? We go beyond the letter of the law. So, so what? Yeah. So, so I'm just so 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 connect that to what we're learning. What uh, Robert was saying that um, um, oh boy. <laughs> Um, uh, about the after bracha being, which one is more important and which one uh, is longer, uh, is something along those lines. Are you about the first bracha before the bracha after the bracha before the the bracha after? Right, but I'm just saying. So, so are you explaining why it's why it's longer? Why the bracha after is longer? Or are you explaining why the bracha after is more important or less important than the one before? Well, I don't want to say more important, but um, it, it's more praiseworthy. Uh-huh, uh-huh, right. In other words, even though we didn't, we didn't get satisfied and we're still doing it. Right. right. The only thing is that that's not a biblical obligation that we do it. So I don't know if we can mix that in here. In other words, we're talking about the obligation and you're talking about going beyond the letter of the law. So I think if I think because we're talking about the biblical obligation, I don't know if we could include that that idea. In other words, it's great that you brought it up. That's 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 a very nice Gemara that we want we learned a while back and uh, we've mentioned. But um, I'm not sure if it if it if it can be connected here because here we're talking about the obligation of benching, and, and that's really beyond the letter of the law. Um, David had his hand up before this, so I want to first answer David. I know some of you just lifted your hands now, David. Yeah, I was going to say that if a person had to be um, had to bench birchas hamazon before he ate, he would die, he might die from hunger while he's is saying the uh -huh. blessing. Uh huh. Okay. This okay. is one of the re this is one of the reasons we say why don't we say a blessing before we do the mitzvah of giving charity? Because while uh -huh. you're saying the blessing, the guy could die from hunger. So you give right. the charity first. Uh huh. Uh huh. Very nice. Very nice thought, Don. Okay. Yes, Ezra. Well, first of all, Berkat Amazon, in relationship to what you're actually eating, is the first blessing. So uh -huh. 
It's the other stuff is the addition that added after the fact because of other things that occurred. And so in reality, if you want to talk about what's said afterwards with relationship to what you're eating, it's really the first bracha, not the, not the entire stuff. The other stuff that was added on was after the fact for a few, for other, for other reasons. But I think the reason why... But, but Ezra, I just want to, cut, I just want to uh, on that point, specific point, we do hold that the first three brachas are biblical. So, you yeah, know... With respect to I what understand. You're, you're eating, it's really the first. Okay, but it's, it's still biblically obligated. Okay. I mean, okay. I understand that, but I'm Fine. saying I'm the first just, one is... Yeah. Okay. okay. But yeah, I think yeah. the, the fact of the matter is the, th the things that you, that your body is basically uh, uh, signaling to you, uh, you see a lot more at the beginning or before you eat than what you eat and then what you have at the end in terms of signaling. Secondly, we always feel that with any simcha or whatever it is, after after it after it happens, we normally uh, you know uh, give uh, uh, praise and uh, and and uh, uh, you know um, to Hashem in in great in, uh, in great amounts after it happens, not so much before it happens. So, for example, a woman gives birth. You know we. We we normally have we normally he praises upon the fact that Hashem has done this great goodness to us, and so therefore we have all these things that we we say afterwards. So you can add on as much as you want after the fact, but you know beforehand, uh, since you don't know what's going to happen, perhaps by saying, you know, by saying something in in short form, you're saying Hashem, we know that you can that you can do this. Please uh, do it. And mm -hmm. so uh, and the same thing holds true with uh, in terms of uh, food. You should be able to just say a very short bracha and say, Hashem, we understand where this comes from. And we thank you for it. And, and then eat. And then after that, you know, your body has already felt whatever it is. Just in the same way as, as Robert had said. Uh -huh. And so, therefore, you can you can uh, give as much praise as you want to Hashem. Hashem, you know, Hashem doesn't uh, it. Um, you know, your body your body has already been uh, satisfied. So, uh, you have all this time that you can do that after the fact. Gotcha. Maybe so what, maybe that fits. Maybe that fits with what Dave, what uh, David had said that you know if right. you if you do too much praise at the beginning the the person or whatever it is will won't be around right but what what you're adding is that that the, the in general the after the fact blessings would 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 generally deserve more more wording than the than the beginning because where you haven't done anything yet you haven't gotten you haven't fulfilled it yet and therefore you don't really uh, want to overdo the you, you know you can't you can't overdo it we don't know what's going to happen like uh, as your, your example of giving birth uh, you know what i mean it's after the fact then you really have what to praise for and before the fact you're, you're it's more of a uh, um you don't know that you're yet eating it you, we don't we, you didn't yet eat it like it's 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 sort of so that's an anticipation. interesting point. Yeah, anticipation right. right okay good uh, okay nice um uh, avraham yes I have a very simple thought. Mm -hmm. I would say that uh, in light of the simple thought, that the second blessing is more praiseworthy because, as we've all said, is that you're satiated and you may forget it, forget to pray, because you're satiated, it's some distracts you. So in having a longer prayer, it's more praiseworthy because you remember to let bless God. So I think that's a very good point, because, uh, but at that point, Sometimes it, it sort of um, um, causes me to question the meaning of the Gemara before, where it said that the first bracha is more logical. And if you recite a bracha after, in other words, it's, it's so powerful what you just said, it makes it sound like the after bracha 
would be more powerful than the than the first bracha. You know what I mean? It, because what you're saying is after after the fact, you know, you're 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 you know, you you've received this praise, you received this 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 sustenance, and you deserve. You really should be blessing Hashem much much more. And, because you, um, you you had you remembered. All and I you're remembering, and it's important. Yeah. This is the most important part. Let me just mute everyone. One second. Let me mute. All right. So that's okay. So um, so but yeah, no. I, I so so in, in a certain sense, you know, you think that maybe the after bracha is so important because now you've finally gotten your sustenance. So now it would make sense that you, you know you should you should for sure praise Hashem before you didn't actually eat it yet. Right, but 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 it, which is a, which which makes sense why it's such a long bracha. Deserve you should remember it. You shouldn't forget it. It's it's common for people to forget things after the fact because now you don't. I don't need you anymore. You know, someone gives you you need something from someone. They finally give it to you, and now it's like ah, I don't need you anymore. I got it, right? But in 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 in, in the after bracha is showing the opposite that we actually appreciate and we remember that Hashem gave it to us. And so it's definitely important to, to thank Hashem for what he gave us. But the, um, uh, the, the, so the question is, how is the first bracha more logical that the Gemara says a kal v'chaymer, an a priori argument, that if you recite a bracha afterwards, for sure you should recite a bracha before. But, uh, um, but it seems that both seem to be able to go hand in hand, that on the one hand, the, uh, the the um, the after bracha is longer and very important, and the same, and it's biblical. And the 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 other bracha is almost like a kavachimer. For sure, you should recite it. It's it's even more logical than the after bracha because you're hungry, and um, if you're if you're satisfied and you recite it, and you have to recite a bracha for sure when you're hungry, you should recite a bracha. So okay, yeah, thank you all. Uh, uh, Oh, um, David, I see people. Okay, David. Yeah, this is my question from before. How can you learn a Kal Homer? The, the after bracha, a person has to be satisfied and has to eat a certain measurement. Right. So how can you learn a, a, a Kal Homer from that? For the first bracha, you didn't eat anything yet. There's no measurement. There's no satisfaction that's required. Yeah, so that is a, it seems like a, a good question. Um, what, what, the, the thing is that, that what are you really praising Hashem for? So in the after bracha, your praise is on the satisfaction. The first bracha, your praise is about, um, it, it's about, uh, removing your your hunger that you you're 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 uh, able to uh, you know eat something that's that's um, you know that's going to uh, uh, sus- that's going to sustain you and so in other words the the purpose of the bracha is specifically that in other words the after bracha is what are you you need to thank Hashem for something what do, what do you thank Hashem for that is, that's all about the satisfaction. That's what it's all about. The beginning bracha would be more thanking Hashem for creating this item. In other words, it, it's not really connected because you're not really thanking Hashem for the satisfaction. It's more for the fact that he created. It's not about being satisfied. It's, uh, the, the purpose of the bracha is a little different. So I think that, I think that answers your question. In other words, it, the the after bracha, you're right. It has to be about satisfaction because that's really what it's all. That's really what you're, the whole praise is. But the beginning bracha is more about Hashem creating it, and therefore it doesn't necessarily have to be to the point of being fully satisfied. But it's it's simply uh, alleviating your hunger somewhat, or, or you know, or or enjoying the fact that or the fact that Hashem created it. You know, Rebbe? so that would be. But but I will say this: that it is we. we we are not concluding with this explanation in the end of the Gemara. This is still in the, what's called the Shakal Vatarya. It's still part of the discussion of the Gemara before the conclusion. So it, it, it could be that at this point in the Gemara, the Gemara is thinking that even if you, re, the, the obligation of reciting a bracha 
is only on a, is only if you're going to be satisfied. So in other words, you could answer your question by saying, well, the Gemara at this point is not concluding that you recite a bracha even on a small amount. At this point, the Gemara is understanding the Mishnah to mean it may be a, a fully satisfied also. So in other words, there could be such an answer because we're not at the conclusion of the Gemara. We're still in the Shakal Bataria. So that, that would be another option of how to answer such a question. Um, but I see Ezra wanted to say something in Isaac. So Ezra, what did you want to say? No, I, I, I agree also with, with Ben. The fact of the matter is that if you were to just eat without saying a bracha beforehand, it would be the equivalent of, of, of stealing. Okay. And that's also against a biblical, uh, it's a so, so biblical. That's the, end. that's the end of the Gemara, right? That, that's the conclusion of the Gemara, really, that it's a logical thing. So, so that, that's the conclusion. We're, we're not up to there yet, but you're right. In other words, like, you can't, and you're so, not wrong. And so, the and so therefore, in order not to take something that doesn't belong to you, mm -hmm. the way that you, you know, to be poter, to give, uh, uh, to absolve the, the, the situation that you have, the baracha comes along and does that. Right, right. Gotcha. Okay, okay. Um, uh, Isaac, you wanted to say hello, something? Hello, hello. Oh, Shlami Oh, boy, you had something a long time ago. We forgot. Yes, Shlami I was patiently waiting. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, logically, it would seem that the second book after the satisfaction is more valuable, more powerful, and greater, and more praiseworthy. But if you were to ask, there is one other element of satisfaction. When the food is available, your body is so good enough to digest it properly. So there's an element of thanks that you help you enough to eat, even. But if you were to raise a uh, Holocaust survivor, which part, which one would be more worthy in his eyes, I'm sure he would say the first one, that he has the food, not to satisfaction him, necessarily. Who, who would say that the first one is more valuable and important? A Holocaust, a Holocaust survivor ah. that, has, that never had food, or a hungry guy in the concentration camp. Right. Uh huh. Just to be able to, to have the food in his hand would be a blessing of, of magnitude. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's another element, though, in trying to <laughs> to weigh the options. I would say the second one, normally, you're having a good state, you're enjoying that small praiseworthy that I enjoyed it and I can go away with the feeling that I'm going to survive and thrive because. I had enjoyed it, and it's not. I got you, Reb Shlomo Yosef. What you're saying is that to us, it's not. The, the, it's hard to understand the Gemara, but for people who, who you know, who get who are hungry at times, and uh, you know, it's like a miracle for them to have food. For them, they can understand this very clearly. That when you're right. roy, when you're hungry, and you have food in your hand, that is. Right deservant of a blessing after the fact it's sort of you know you're satisfied you're not in need now there's it's not really a uh um such, such a great accomplishment right. such, such an important uh, uh praise right. it's a much much more amazing bracha okay very very nice thank you Shlomi isaac 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 yeah. isaac you're muted that the first bracha is more of you're driving on the highway and you're starving and you suddenly see a sign for a restaurant. So you're saying, Baruch Hashem, there's a place, there's a way of me satisfying my hunger. And then afterwards, when you're fully satisfied, you can sit back and thank Hashem for the food, you can thank Him for the land, you can thank him for the road, you can thank him for Yerushalayim. It's a very different kind of bracha of gratitude after you've been satisfied, that when the hunger is there and you suddenly see the thing that will satisfy your hunger. And the reason why I think you don't have the very long brachas in the beginning is because nobody would say them. 
when you're hungry, you're hungry. And I know when I was growing up, when I first got my diabetes, I said it was a bracha from Hashem. Because obviously I was not saying brachas well enough because I didn't have time before I ate. So Hashem said, I'm going to show you, you have lots of time before you eat. You have time to do this and you have time to do that. And he was right. It slowed me down a little bit. So I think the two very different kinds of brachas. The first one may be more important in the sense of you have the gratitude. Hashem, thank you. You're the one who brings food out. You're the one who brings it from the ground or from the tree or from wherever you're bringing it. The after bracha is one of gratitude at the completion. You're done eating now. You're about to get up to do something else. This event in your life is over. So now you can give a longer thanks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sounds sounds good. So so the first bracha really is much more important because it's like uh, the miracle almost. The second bracha is more a thanks bracha. First bracha is like a miracle, like you like you you got what you you really needed something, and Hashem now put it in front of you. So it's sort of like a a Yeshua, like a salvation bracha. The second bracha is more of a is more of a thanks bracha. Is that, is that correct? Am I saying Well, it? the first one, yes. The first one is thank you for providing this, right. for putting it in front of me. I haven't even used it yet. Right. But thank you for the potential of satisfying my mm-hmm. needs with what you've given me. Mm-hmm. Afterwards, you sit back and you can thank you know, him for lots of things. Right, right. Okay, that's an interesting, uh, an interesting way of putting it. It's almost like... Uh, the first bracha is almost like on a on a on a miracle type of thing, and the second bracha, you know, on a, a like a Yeshua, you've been saved, you pidyon shvuyim, you've been uh, redeemed, you're 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 challenged, and the second bracha is is more of a thanks. Okay, in any event, uh, we have the um, we have this uh, uh, um, I, 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 um, idea that the first bracha um, is learned from a kal v'chaimer. And the second bracha would be learned from the extra word hilulim. The one of the extra hilulims would teach us the um, the the law of the after bracha. And um, and the Gemara says that Ashdechon Kerem Sha'ar Minin Minayin. So the Gemara says, we're back in the Gemara in the middle of the page. The last word on the line is Ashkechon. And it says, Ashkechon Kerem, we would know here from this that you need to praise Hashem for the vineyard. Because the word Hilolim is talking about the fourth year produce of the vineyard. So we see here, guess what? You got to say a bracha when you eat grapes, when you drink wine. But Charmin and Minayan, how are we going to know about all the other items? Well, you need to recite a bracha for other fruits and other vegetables. And uh, it, so, how would you know that? So the Gemara says, "The Aleph Mi Kerem." We can learn from Kerem, Ma Kerem Davar Shenen of Ton Bracha. Just like we learn from Kerem, just like a vineyard, it's something that you benefit from, and you recite a bracha. Af Kol Davar Shenen Ton Bracha. Anything that you benefit from, you should recite a bracha. So the Gemara is assuming that we could learn anything similar from the, from the kerem, from the, from the grapevine brachas. And the Gemara, again, we would learn from the grapevine bracha that just like there's a bracha afterwards, because it says the word hilul, and there's a bracha before it, because a kal v'chaimer. So we would be able to, to learn uh, that you have to recite a bracha for a grapevine. And from the grapevine, we would learn from all the other, all the other trees and, and vegetables and other things that you, anything you benefit from, you should recite a bracha. The Gemara, however, is not satisfied with that. And the Gemara says, there is reason to say that maybe a vineyard deserves a bracha because of its uniqueness. And maybe that doesn't, won't be able to teach us on any other item, like an orange, or an apple, or a vegetable, or, or uh, meat, 
or fish or, or eggs or it won't be able to teach us on all those other items because there's something unique about the vineyard and maybe that's why it's it's going to be special that you recite a bracha for the vineyard and what what is unique about a, a, about the vineyard shekain chayev ba'ilalois a vineyard has special laws in torah that you have to give to the poor something called ilalois ilalois are the the um the, the um uh the four, the, the four out of wheat and grapes that you're harvesting it's 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 not the ones that are that fell out it's the clusters of grapes that are the bad ones in other words they're not they're they're, they're not as full and heavy as the regular cluster it's like the the grapes are growing on the middle on the middle twig instead of on the branches and uh they also not drooping down which means nice heavy grapes that are drooping down and that's what oil lice is. And those you have to leave for the poor. The poor people get those. So the the uh, the idea is that in there are certain laws uh, for each of the for different produce of what you have to leave for the poor. And in the olden days, or the way it worked was that anyone had a field, they would leave these. Uh, they would leave this um, for the poor people. To uh, to take it. I wonder what goes on nowadays in Israel if they do this. Uh, I mean, I guess it's a mitzvah; you have to. But I wonder if they have poor people coming through the uh, the uh, the farms and uh, taking the leket. I, I would have to find out from uh, an Israeli farmer if anyone knows anyone. I'd like to find out if they do the 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 shikha and the pay if they have poor people coming through the uh, the uh, farms in Israel yeah. doing. It. But I I guess so. It's a mitzvah. I just wonder if people do it. They probably just get ch people who are poor. I don't know if it's like popular for poor people to do this. But um, in any event, uh, this is the mitzvah. And uh, the, the mitzvah with regard to grapes is, uh, is that you would, um, you would leave these over for the poor people to come and take those, the, the clusters that are not the, not such uh, the, you know, not, not the, the regular clusters, but maybe like the weaker, uh, the, 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 the bad quality ones that way you were obligated to leave for the poor. And, um, and uh, the Gemara says that maybe that's why you have to recite a bracha for the vineyard uh, produce, because there's special laws about vineyards. And just like there's a special law that it's obligated in giving oil life, it's also obligated in reciting a bracha. But that doesn't mean that every food item that you benefit from, you have to recite a bracha. This is unique. This has special laws to it. And because it has those special laws, it has this special law. It has a special law about oil lice. Therefore, it has a special law about a bracha that you recite as thanks to Hashem. So the Gemara says that <coughs> Let's learn from the bracha regarding bread, that just like you have to recite a bracha for bread, you would have to recite a bracha for other foods. Let's learn from bread. So the Gemara says, bread also is unique. Bread is a special mitzvah to separate challah for bread. And just like there's a mitzvah to separate challah, there's also a mitzvah for to say a bracha. Because challah means a certain portion of the bread you'd have to separate and give to the kohen. Nowadays, we burn it because the kohens are not pure. We don't know also who's a definite kohen. And, the, and they also don't have the purity to eat the challah in purity. And therefore, the challah separation is a, you take a, a, a portion from the challah and you burn it. Uh, or some people don't burn it. They pour bleach on it and throw it out. But the idea is that you have to separate it and make it inedible. And um, you throw it out. And uh, that is uh, the mitzvah of challah. And maybe the obligation of, uh, uh, of, of bracha on, on bread is only because bread also has a mitzvah called challah. Therefore, it also has a mitzvah called bracha, saying a bracha. But any other food, maybe we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't say that you have to recite a bracha. So that's where we're holding now. We're going to stop here. I'm sorry for taking up a few minutes of your time. 
uh, have a wonderful day. Zaygazon. Thank you, Rabbi. 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 Thank you, Rabbi.